Good morning. We are getting ready to start a new eight-day journey. We're going to be looking at one character for eight days. He's one of the most important characters in Scripture. He's called Abram at first, and then God changes his name to Abraham. When you go to the New Testament, he's an Old Testament character. We first meet him in Genesis chapter 12. So he would have been living about, you know, almost, almost 2,000 years before Jesus. But when you come to the New Testament, the New Testament keeps pointing back to him. Uh, he's the father, ultimately, of the nation of Israel, but he's more importantly the start of God calling people out on the basis of God revealing himself to them, promising certain things to them, and then waiting for them to put their trust in him and respond. So when you read, for example, in the book of Romans in the New Testament, chapter 4, almost the entire fourth chapter of Romans is dedicated to Abraham, and it keeps pointing at him and saying, if you want to know the kind of relationship that God built human beings to have with himself, it's look at Abraham. James chapter 2, you have the exact same thing. Uh, it says that he's the model of what real trust in God looks like and what it produces. In the book of Hebrews chapter 11, uh, 12 verses are dedicated to Abraham, once again, as the model, the prototype of what it means for a human being to truly trust in God. Now, let me back up a bit. You have to think in terms of, of what was God's eternal uh, intention for his, his, the way he would relate to humans and himself, to angels and himself. We are image bearers. We, we have mind, reason, emotions, will. Um, so how is God going to relate to us? Because he's the most powerful and the most intelligent and the most loving, this necessitates him leading us. Okay, it's just like a parent leads a child because the child doesn't know what it needs and how to protect itself. The parent is older, wiser, more loving, and so forth. So the problem comes in though, how is God going to lead us in a way that we will be fulfilled and satisfied, and He knows it will be for our good and the good of the universe. So, many of you have heard me say this before. God has to get us to live according to His will, because it's the only way life works. It's, it's not arbitrary. It's necessary. So how is He going to do it? Is He going to use force? Well, if He uses force on us, we're robots. We're not image bearers. Is He, is he going to use fear? that if we you know, don't do His will, that He'll you know, strike us with a disease or He'll kill us. Well, that's not very satisfying. We would dread God. There's only one condition. Only, I, I'm telling you, think about it, pray about it, search the Bible as I have done for over 40 years. There's only one condition, and that's trust or faith. God wants us, human beings and angels, to trust in Him, have faith in Him, because when you trust in God, when you have faith in God, you want to know His will, and you want to do His will. Faith or trust produces obedience, but it's delightful obedience. That's the only way that life in the universe can work, a universe where you have beings that are image bearers like God with mind, reason, will, and emotion, and so on. All right, so Abraham is the model, the model of what it's like for a human being to enter into a relationship with God, the kind of relationship that God grants eternal life to. In fact, it's the only kind of relationship that He can grant eternal life or immortality to safely. So we want to really pay attention to Abraham. So let's go back and let's meet him in Genesis chapter 12. And I'm going to pick up reading in verse 1. We're just going to read a few verses. It says, The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your country, leave your people, your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Verse 4, very important. So Abram left as the Lord had told him, and that's where we start. Now Abraham, it goes on to say, was, was 75 years old. Let me give you a little background. Abraham was living in a very cosmopolitan city of the day. It was called Ur of the Chaldees. He was evidently a very wealthy guy. He was 75. He had friends. He had family. He had a business. Uh, you know, he had a wonderful, comfortable lifestyle in Ur of the Chaldees, very you know, sophisticated city. God comes to him reveals himself convincingly to him and says, Abraham, if you want to ever become who you were meant to become, and if you ever want to do what you were meant to do, 
you've got to trust me. You've got to be willing to leave it all behind. Leave. You're going to have to leave your family behind. You're going to have to leave your friends behind. You're going to have to leave your livelihood behind. You're going to have to leave your old ways of life behind. Abram, you're going to have to be willing to leave your entire old way of life, your old will, and you're going to have to trust me. I'm going to take you to a new land, and I'm going to make you into a great nation, and I'm going to bless you, but more importantly, I'm going to make you a blessing to the whole world, and anybody that, that bothers you, well, they're going to have to deal with me. That, that's essentially what it says. Now, here's the remarkable thing. The Scripture says Abraham left. Picture this. Picture yourself being an extraordinarily wealthy, successful uh, business owner. You know, and may, maybe you have millions of dollars and you've poured your life into this business and you've built friendships and so forth. And God says, leave it all behind. If, if, if you leave it behind, I'll make your name great. I'll bless you. I'll bless others through you. But Abram, because he trusts God, he simply trusted what God was saying. He did it. Now, here's why it's so important for you and I. I mentioned this phrase earlier, and it's one that I've been using for 30 years or more. When we put our faith in Christ, our trust in God, as He's revealed Himself completely in Christ, that is the only way that you and I can become who we were meant to become and do what we were meant to do. Abraham was going to be the start of this dramatic movement that goes right down to our day. But he could never be that guy unless he was willing to trust God, leave his old life behind, and follow the will of God. It's always the same. Jesus comes and He says, follow me. Uh, when we trust Him, we do. The evidence of our faith or our trust in God is always in our obedience. In the book of James chapter 2, when it points to Abraham again, that's the very thing it points to, is that when God later on asks for Abraham to make a great sacrifice, Abraham trusts God so much he does it. I hope, I hope this uh, eight-day journey will be very memorable and meaningful for you.